Hey guys, how's it going? It's Delmar again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to invite you to subscribe to the channel because that's really gonna help me in growing this amazing community. And today I'm super excited because I'm gonna walk you through ray tracing again. This is gonna be a continuation of the videos that I did on ray tracing. And today I'm gonna be walking you through how you can change the sky that is already assigned to the scene. We're using the HDRI sky. I'm also gonna show you how to add a procedural sky and a grading sky. And lastly, we're gonna be looking at how to add a volumetric fog. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right guys, so let me show you the scene that I showed you last time for ray tracing. And like I said in the beginning, this is gonna be showing you the HDRI sky. A lot of you asked me if that was available on the ray tracing scene and it is available. So the way to access it is you have to go to rendering settings, then go into visual environment. So this is basically using the HDRP pipeline and it's very similar setup to what I done in the previous videos where you have to create a rendering profile. So if I double click on the rendering profile, it'll basically give you all the different options that are available, such as visual environment, HDRI sky, ambient occlusion, and then you can add other ones if you like to. You can add post-processing, you can add shadowing, you can also add a sky just like I, you know, like I did in previous videos. But the thing to know is that what I'm using right now is the HDRI sky. So if you go under visual environment and you add that component, you're gonna see these already being added in this example scene. But if you haven't used the rendering, the high definition rendering pipeline, you might not be very familiar with this, but just so know that by creating a rendering profile, you can set the HDRI sky. So if I were to uncheck this, you're gonna see that we're not, we don't have any sky already selected. If I set it, it's basically gonna be using the HDRI sky component that I have assigned to it. And this already has one associated with it that has been created previously. So if I open it up, you should be able to see the cube map that it created for me. And, and this was part of this project already. So that's how this project works. If you wanted to do a different setup, you're more than welcome to do so. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But the other thing that you can do with this is you can also change the exposure. And in fact, what we can do is I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And you'll be able to see how everything is running in real time. We are looking at 70, let's see, 100 FPS, which is actually performing really well. I can hear my my RTX 2080 car is starting just because this is doing ray tracing. The the other cool thing about this setup is we can tweak things as we you know as we like to. If I want to change the exposure, maybe I want it to be you know a little bit darker. You can see how that is affecting you know the scene on the left and in the scene on the right. I can also if I wanted to enable the multiplier, you can you can enable that as well. Also, if you wanted to change some of these other settings, you can do that as well. So the HDRI sky is what is being used in this scene. Also in this setup, we're currently not using fog, but if you wanted to use fog, you can either use linear fog, you can use exponential fog and volumetric fog. So if I add linear fog, you can see that that automatically is applying a linear fog to the scene. The other fog, you will need to add a component to account for that, which is gonna be part of the volumetric fog component. And in fact, if I hit, if I hit add override, you can see that I can add a fog and I can add a volumetric fog. So if I go in and change, let's say that I wanted to change this and I wanted to add fog, I could say, okay, I wanna add either volumetric fog, exponential fog or linear fog. So if I select that, I can now, you know, I can now change some of the settings that are attached to the volumetric fog component and also change the type on my visual environment. The other, the other cool thing about this is that if I hit play, because this is being serialized to the file system, you're not losing the changes that you're making. So if I hit play and I stop the game, this already being written to the file system, so I'm guaranteed that I'm gonna have these settings already. So if I hit play again, we can, we can go ahead and tweak the volumetric fog. So you can change the single scattering albedo if you wanted to change that, also the fog distance, the base height. So let me go ahead and change some of these settings so that you can see how this affects the scene. So if I were to add a lower number, and we can say, you know, I'm going to add distant fog, and I'm also going to change the height. Let me go ahead and add the 
change the fog distance as well. It's gonna be, let's make it a lower number so that we can see how it's affecting the scene. So if I change this value, you can see how the fog is affecting the whole scene. And, and we, yeah, like that looks like, looks like we're getting way too much volumetric fog. And it actually looks really cool, but you can see how it's affecting the lighting, it's affecting, you know, all the surroundings. I can also play with some of these settings if I wanted to go maybe higher because I don't want the fog distance to be as close to, you know, the distance of the scene. I can also change the height if I wanted to. Let me see if I can. There we go. So that is making some changes. I can also change the mean height and the max fog distance. I can change it in here. We can also change the color, like I said at the beginning. Maybe I want this to be more of a reddish or maybe, maybe even a yellow. Say that we wanted to emit the yellow color on these lights and we can probably, let me go ahead and change the distance so that it's not as strong and that probably doesn't look that good. Let's go ahead and select the, let's go, go, go back to white and we can change, there we go, something like that. And that probably doesn't look as good as, as I want it to look, but that's so that I can show you how volumetric fog works also how HDR Sky works. So the other thing that I can show you is, let's say that we didn't want to use this HDR Sky that is part of this ray tracing scene. So it's as easy as creating an override and then going into a Sky and then selecting a, a Sky. So I could say whether to use a gradient Sky, whether to use a procedural Sky. So let's select the procedural Sky and see how we can change that. So the way that this works is like I said, this is using the components that are here. So if I want this to use the procedural sky, I would need to go back into visual environment, select the type, and then change, change this to procedural sky. So right off the bat, you see that, you know, I'm getting changes. So now we're getting a procedural sky. And let me go back to rendering settings. So now we can say, okay, I want to get a sun and I can enable the sun disk. Let's see if I can find my sun. Let me go ahead and add some of these settings. And there we go. Let me just go back and I can probably change. So if we change the atmosphere thickness, you can see how that is changing. And let me see. The other thing that I can also do is if you want the exposure to be very high, you can change that as well. But this allows you to modify basically the, the sky procedurally, which I think is, is really cool and very powerful if you don't want to worry about you know, creating a cube map for your sky. You can also change the tint of the sky. So if this was, you know, maybe, maybe more of a yellowish color because the sun is coming out, you can do that. Or if you wanted to make it just, you know, blue, we can go and something like that, I think works. Also, let me change the thickness. And so you can see how, how that is changing. It's also changing the reflection on the lamps, which is really, really cool. And let me go ahead and remove the volumetric sky so that I can show you the volumetric fog so I can show, show you how that is affecting. So that right there is making big changes. So on the reflection from the lamps, and let me see. So that gives you basically an idea of how you can change. So if we do blue, you can kind of see the blue coming out. Let me remove the stats on the, on the top. So you can play with some of these settings. I, I haven't really spent too much time on the procedural sky other than what I'm what I've done so far. So that's what procedural sky will do for you if you wanted to add the gradient sky. It's basically the same the same process. You would add the component and then you will go back into the type of the sky and select the sky. In this case I would say gradient. And right now it's like super super strong. So but of course you can go in and say okay I want to modify you know, the gradient diffusion, if you wanted to change that, you can see how that is changing the scene. And I would say just experiment with this, you know, with some of these settings, I think that I think that's the key for me is just, you know, getting a cool look and then also looking at performance because that is big. Right now where the performance is really, really good. We are at 112 frames per second. And then you can also change, you know, of course the colors of these and also the middle color and the bottom color. So if I go ahead and change some of these, you can see how the light is reflecting through through the glass. And there we go, if we wanna go a little bit darker or if we wanna go really, really strong, 
then you kind of get the idea about how those work. So that's basically uh, an overview of how you can change the HDRR sky that is already assigned to this ray tracing scene. Also, I show you how you could add a different kind of sky, like the gradient sky and the procedural sky. And I also show you how to use volumetric fog, which is, you know, really, really handy. And it looks really cool when, whenever you're building, you know, if you're building a city or if you're building, you know, a scene that, that uses fog, I think that's really, really helpful. So that's everything that I wanted to show you guys. Thank you. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Also, be sure to check out GameDev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers, also an amazing forum and an amazing community. And don't forget to check me out on Patreon page where I'm basically posting early access to source code and also everything that I'm doing behind the scenes. Thank you, guys.